Well, hello everyone. Um, sun is in my eyes, so I, I look like I'm squinting right now. But anyways, right now it's a one year since I installed these solar panels. I mean, this video will go not too much in depth, but information in regards to this system. How does it perform after one year? How much power I made? How the how are inverters performing right now? But we start where we did one year ago with all this pollen accumulating in the springtime. So let's dive into it. Let's go around this solar array and see what we have. So here's the solar array after one year. It looks good, nothing's wrong, everything's working properly. Color has changed a little bit, some things have faded. But let's go around and see what we have. So here we are on the back side. Everything is still holding on. A little bit of a close up. Some things have changed color. As with an exposure to the elements. I gotta say one thing. The thing that I painted, the, the, the truck bed spray that I used, the black color. It works really good. I mean, this thing will not fall off. I don't think it will ever fall off. And I think it has provided excellent protection for these unprotected Schedule 40 steel pipes that I purchased for the construction of this solar array. I don't see any issues with it. Just a little bit of a weathering. The connection still look good as they were the day I install it. I don't see any problems. Array is still making ton of power, so nothing is lacking in that department. So here we are going slowly. Here we come to the box where everything goes down on the ground in a conduit towards the house. A little bit of a rust where I cut these. Other than that, Everything looks good. Couple of these wires, they're not the same, so they kind of, let me see if I can focus it. They kind of faded out in a color where this one still kind of stayed, stayed uh, red color. Here we are. Trina Solar is still holding up. So there we are. Let's go back to the house and look at the outside equipment that I had and its condition after one year. So here's the outside equipment. DC disconnect, transfer switch, and the new service box that I put in and I have installed power surge protectors it's been sitting there that that weathered a little bit it was completely white but now it's kind of a white in a color if you can see here on the side stickers have faded some of them at least the DC disconnects are more faded than wrap a shutdown PV array. I know some people saying this is not correct, but hey, it worked for me. Circuit one lever has faded on the Siemens disconnect, while the other three are stay the same. I don't know why that happened, but anyways, this is how it looks like. The letters have faded that I put in there. So I think everything will be just fine. 
So here we are at LV6548. They are awesome. They work good, excellent, except number three. Now it is late at night and um, I don't have a solar working, but however, there's a buzzing noise on the right side right here when the fans are working real hard and if I put my hand right here that buzzing stops so I just want to say that maybe a piece of cable is vibrating and creating that sound because as soon as I put my hand it stops this is the only unit that so far have something to report on the uh, other four are super good so that minor, I, I just wanted to report that that minor, that minor thing is the only thing that it's kind of worth reporting on. Other than that, it's beautiful, as I said, and it's working good. My Raspberry Pi 4 setup, data collection setup, has worked flawlessly without any issues. And here we are, here's the current condition. It's about, I don't know, 6.37 p.m. right now. But here's the data on this day. Okay. And then we come to the gutter. It works good. Awesome. And here we come to the power walls. What a magnificent thing. These are beauties. Lithium iron phosphate cells are the thing. And it will be the thing for a long time, in my opinion. Here they are. Let me see if I can turn on some light. For all of those that um, keep count, I have set them on their side and been using them for two and a half years right now. They work flawlessly. I have not seen any alarms or anything getting out of balance so far. Though, I will say that two times in one year, I have spent some time and top balanced them because there was plenty of power and I was able to afford that little endeavor. So, power walls are sight to see. I haven't finished this yet. For those, of, for those of you who keep count. But in this regard, the LV6548s, they are worth the investment. And there was a question if I would do this again. I would definitely do this again, okay? I would definitely do this again, and I would get 6548s. I don't know how they're affordable right now. I'm kind of out of this game right now, but, but they work magnificently. My daughter gave me a little flower to put there. But yeah, everything here, is operating properly. My solar system after one year is still flawless. And there's nothing to complain about. So, whoever is interested in this, I think it's a good idea to go ahead and get it, get it over with. So here are the production numbers for a one year from this 14.8 kilowatt solar array installed in my backyard. Production numbers start with the April 1st and finish with the March 31st of 2022. In total, the array has produced 12,377 kilowatt hours. From a grid, we have used 3,937 for a total of 16,314 kilowatt hours.
the amount sent to electric vehicle is at 2139 of course this number is a whole lot higher I did not have numbers recorded and I did not have ability to record numbers from April to July and finally I got around to installing everything uh, onto my data collection system in September so so data is from September through March 2139 kilowatt hours but the 16,314 kilowatt hours includes energy delivered to the car too so that can give you an insight into um, how much energy uh, you would use more or less without electric vehicle okay now the numbers the worst number the worst production number was December. December was gloomy and, and rainy like I have never seen it before in this part of the world where I live. I mean look at the difference between the December and January. I mean even in January I the the array produced 907 kilowatt hours. February 980 in March almost 1100. So I expect so I expect if, if we have a normal summer and not rainy like we did last summer, especially August and October where I didn't even break a thousand, I think we will be able to produce around 14 to 15,000 kilowatt hours. I would be happy with those numbers. However, I think I'm going to be limited to these production numbers because I do not have enough battery storage and of course as you know LB6548s do not have an ability to send power back to the grid. So I'm limited with what my storage is, how much energy I use and when do I use it. You know last year I have managed to train myself better to use energy more efficiently in regards to uh, consumption okay so those are the numbers so let's go into the next set next segment and talk about one regret that I do have here are the numbers for the month of March as indicated on my spreadsheet before March of this year created 1000 99 kilowatt hours of solar energy use we use 133 from the grid. All right, let's go a little bit in more details as to why am I regretting, uh, why do I have regrets in regards to my solar system. So here's the solar production for every day of, for, the mar, uh, for the month of March. Okay, here's my regret. See that on March 20th, the solar array produced 62.53 kilowatt hours. That means I charge the I charge the power walls and the rest of it was used towards the house. Now the next day, we were busy during these days and we were not home a lot. And then you know the solar system produced 28.5 kilowatt hours to 233.75. So basically around 30 kilowatt hours per day for the next five days. Now my regret is not having enough battery storage to offset for the rainy days. I thought when I was building three of my power walls that 53 to 54 kilowatt hours worth of energy would be sufficient. However, it is not. So whatever number you think you need, just go ahead and double it at that time and that's probably what is going to be good enough for you. So that's why I'm going to back to and talking about that spreadsheet. I think I have wasted good two to three thousand kilowatt hours throughout the year because I did not have enough battery storage. Key is if you don't have a system that exports energy to the grid that you can use later that you need to have large enough storage to store all that energy so whatever you do put all your money put everything towards the battery storage if you're not going to have a system that exports energy back to the grid however that might be that this problem might be solved in the next chapter of my life and we will talk about that in the upcoming days. 
All right, guys, I appreciate you watching this. It's been a long time since I posted a video, but I think when I post the next video, you will see the reason why. And I hope that most of you will stick until the end of this video. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.